Hi there, I hope you're all having a wonderful October. Just a little warning, the contents of this video are very spooky. Be warned, you're in for a fright. Some of the fondest memories I have from elementary school involve messing around on the computers. If we finished our work early in the computer lab, or if the weather wasn't great and we had an indoor recess, we were allowed to use the fun little programs available on the school computers. Many of us kept ourselves amused with the art program Kid Picks, I made a boo -boo, yeah. but others of us took our chances with the internet. We sure were brave. One of our favorite sites was Garfield.com, the website dedicated to everyone's favorite comic strip about a lazy cat who eats lasagna. I mean, how many other comics have that premise? The site was filled with different games and features you could check out. One of my favorites was Bean Me. It was just a coffee shop simulator where you'd give Garfield increasingly more lethal coffee and see his reactions to it. But the real main attraction was a little game called Scary Scavenger Hunt. And its sequel, of course. In these, you would take control of Garfield and search through a haunted mansion to find donuts, and sometimes muffins. Characters from the series would appear in various unflattering places, often scaring you as you tried to find the donuts. They just can't let a cat find confectionaries in peace. These games helped to promote Perfection Pastries, a donut brand that collaborated with Garfield. You could see Garfield and Odie on the realistic packages throughout them, but apparently there was a copyright concern because the realistic images were eventually replaced with cartoonish ones in the sequel. You could really impress your classmates by beating these, or even get a hearty chuckle by finding unique ways to scare yourself. So let's take a trip back to the past to relive this spooky adventure. I like how the game screen has these OD gargoyles surrounding it. Gargoides, if you will. Yeah, that sucked, I know. So Garfield stumbles across a haunted house after following directions he got from... somewhere. He's willing to go through it because it has donuts inside. Hey, anything to save money in this economy. I understand throwing yourself into imminent danger to avoid a trip to the grocery store. I'm not even sure why this haunted house has a ton of donuts lying around, or why they felt the need to include that fact in the directions or whatever this paper is, but the story doesn't matter. We're here to have a scavenger hunt for unhealthy delectables. Once you start, you can either use the on-screen arrow keys or the keyboard to move. You still have to click on things with the mouse, so choose your method with this in mind. If you walk to the left, you see John, who gives you random pieces of advice. Lyman loves muffins, stop giving cheese to mice, etc. Hard to believe anyone ever struggled with this game when it just outright tells you how to solve its puzzles. If you continue to the left, you find this graveyard with ghosts that can scare you. <laughs> You have a scarometer at the bottom of the screen that fills up whenever you get spooked. If it fills up all the way, Garfield runs out of the house and it's game over. It's fairly easy to avoid this, just don't touch anything that looks impractical. That's also my philosophy in real life. If you keep going, you'll find a combination you can use later, but you also find a grave you can defile for donuts. You do this by finding the shovel to the right of the house, also the front door key. By the way, sour cream donuts? Those don't sound very good. Apparently they're a popular flavor. Maybe I just need to extend my palate. But you can't deny that's an unusual combination. So once you enter the haunted house, you can go in one of many different directions. To the left, we see an inconspicuous picture of a man sitting in a chair. I'm sure we don't need to pay any attention to that. In the living room, you can snag some cheese and- <laughs> Just miss me. I never liked that the game required you to get scared in some instances. What if my scarometer was about to run out? Thankfully, collecting things takes some of your spook away, so it's easy to get your meter back down. You get a key in the next hall that leads you to the music room beyond the fireplace room. This led to my least favorite minigame as a kid. You have to remember the order the instruments play themselves, then you click on them to repeat said order. I can still remember trying to quickly write the order down so I wouldn't forget it. I may or may not have done it again in adulthood, but I like to play it safe. Now let's head to the library. You have to arrange these books in order so you can open the staircase to the basement, also known as the dungeon. What, didn't you know they're interchangeable? Garfield should also feel honored. According to these titles, the ghosts in the mansion have books about him. He's like a celebrity here, why are they trying to scare him off? Also, I'm not so sure I want to know what Furry Tales is about. I already reviewed Polar Bowler. So unless you have the flashlight, you'll find that it's too dark to see in the basement, so you have to go get it from the kitchen. Hey, we aren't supposed to have ice cream until dessert. 
In the kitchen, these mice tell you to check one cupboard or the other, but you actually have to look in the middle one. You get the flashlight, but you can't open the fridge because it has a lock on it. This really is a scary game. If you head in the basement, you find the character Lyman in one of the cells. Now this is actually a really disturbing joke in Garfield lore. In the comics, Lyman used to be Odie's owner and a friend of John's. He was a recurring character that was eventually written out of the series for unknown reasons. There have been many theories surrounding what happened to him, so this game decided to throw in a little dark humor of its own. Countless other explanations were given to explain his disappearance. Some of these include he left and forgot to take Odie with him, he joined the Peace Corps, and the simple phrase, don't look in John's basement. Jim Davis himself said that last one was just a joke, though. Lyman actually appeared in the 2008 Garfield show in a four-part episode that aired in 2012. So maybe that's a satisfying conclusion for the fans of Lyman. I imagine he has quite an expansive fan base. So he's hungry for muffins, and his hunger is so earth-shattering that it causes the chains to fall off the fridge upstairs. I can honestly relate. It's why I can't stick to a diet. So you get a muffin from the fridge and give it to Lyman. He tells you to check out the fireplace, which seems like a trick, but I'll go along with it for now. The fire from earlier has gone out, and if you go outside, you... <coughs> ah, it was a trick, you dastardly old fool. Nah, it's okay, you get muffins out of it. They aren't donuts, but we'll take them anyway. Now you can head in this room and see the combination for a safe in the graveyard we went through earlier. Kinda nice of the game to tell you the combination right when you need to use it. Once again, you get muffins for it. I thought we were here for donuts. The direction should have said, this haunted house is filled with donuts and muffins. Talk about false advertising. Now let's head upstairs. You can uncover these sheets for donuts and... Oh. That's an even more gruesome explanation for Lyman's disappearance. I guess the muffin caused his head to fall off. Maybe we shouldn't eat those ones we found in the cell. In this bedroom, you can give the cheese you found to a mouse who's guarding assorted donuts. If you don't have cheese, it growls at you. You can flip this switch to activate a staircase outside, but you can also go in this bathroom that serves no purpose in this game. Oh, Lyman's in the shower. Of the three possible fates for Lyman, this is the best possible one. He showers in a haunted house now. We found the good ending. So if we climb the stairs we just activated, we find a creepy Binky the Clown who tells us the bats need help spelling. Unfortunately, the minigame wouldn't work for me, so I had to start over again. I remember this happening when I was a kid, too, so maybe it's an issue with the game itself. But if you need a quick game over, just keep talking to Binky. But if it works, you have to click on the bat so they spell Garfield correctly. It was always easy when you played this on the Garfield website because all you had to do was look in the corner to see how it was spelled. After that, you get the last box of donuts and win. It's a fine little adventure. Certainly one you can have a lot of fun with. Challenging for younger players, but I'd say just the right amount of it. Not too easy, not too hard, but really satisfying when you beat it. So let's check out the sequel, Donuts of Doom. This one's a little darker than the first, if you can believe that. This time, you don't go to the haunted house on your own accord. You wake up in the basement and have to find your way out. For some reason, you're still trying to find donuts. Garfield, I think you have more concerning matters to worry about. I mean, I respect his priorities. So it's dark, and you have to find matches to light the furnace before you can see anything. You'll then find that Lyman has disappeared. Some people say he died, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say he found another house to shower in. We'll go with the happy ending continuity. So you can find a key that leads to the exit, but there's a big dog blocking an entrance through the fireplace. You have to give him a bone to appease him. Then you can sneak back into the haunted house instead of climbing the gate or something like that. I guess Garfield really wants those donuts before he goes. This big donut box you can find is also an interesting new mechanic. You can collect donuts that are just laying around, so you have incentive to search the entire mansion. It's like a mini scavenger hunt in a much bigger scavenger hunt. I like it. Another new mechanic is the ability to walk through holes in the wall. These just take you to other rooms, so you can get around the house much quicker than before, just as long as you know where every hole leads. In the bedroom, the mirror shatters and you have to put it back together like a puzzle. I still remember where most of these shapes go off the top of my head. Goes to show how much I used to play this. In the attic, you can meet Werewolf Shaggy. Don't even lie to me, that's obviously him. You can also get muffins from the bats by catching them in this minigame. It's fun, but again, I thought we were here for the donuts. In the bedroom, you'll find that Liz has met a grisly fate, having become a mannequin head. But you can take a hairpin from her. What would John think about this? Oh, he's taken Lyman's place in the shower. I guess someone has to use it. Happy ending. 
This hallway is also a much more detailed location than it was the first time around. Wade Duck is also here to give you advice. Not sure why he's in the mansion, but I guess all of Garfield's friends have been brought here. I'm gonna blame the cast of a rival comic strip for this. I'm looking at you, Calvin and Hobbes. If you look at this painting, it tells you to study it closely for a hidden clue. Yeah, it's a jump scare. Less scary than the one I showed you, though. If you go through this mouse hole, you wind up in this TV room where this guy's eye pops out. You blow up the TV for some sour cream donuts. Wow, the combination of donuts and sour cream was so shocking it destroyed the television. Now let's head to the kitchen. Here, this spooky scary skeleton challenges you to a game of following the donuts under a covered dish and selecting the right one. Once you win, he begs you for a rematch, but you can just say no and send him away. Not sure why you'd ever say yes. You can then use your hairpin to open the lock on the fridge. Inside, you find the severed head of Orson Pig. He's still alive, though. Just barely. This really just moved something in the upstairs bedroom. When you go there, you find Liz's dresser has moved and you can head into the room with the mice. They steal your box of muffins and you play this game where you have to snag them as they fly out of these holes. It's actually kinda hard. The holes are fairly far apart and the mouse is really slow. But the one that gave me the biggest headache has yet to come. <laughs> Yep, it's just like your monitor says, this room is full of spiders. So the bathroom actually has significance this time around because you can find a newspaper in it. You then have to smash the spiders in a sequential order. What order, you ask? Just check out this stained glass window. Yeah, this one stage prevented my child self from beating the game for the longest time. Be happy we live in an age where you can just take a picture of your screen with your phone, because imagine how hard this was in the 2000s when we had to draw it out. Good luck remembering it. But once you figure it out and hit the spiders in the right musical order, they give you donuts for smashing them. Seems like a good trade-off. So once you have all the donuts, you hear a sound in the library. You head out and... Oh no. He's gone. Where'd he go? But this time, the bookshelf leads to an outdoor maze instead of a dungeon. You don't have to solve a puzzle this time. Darn, I was looking forward to reading furry tales. You just wander around trying to find the bobbleheads Wade Duck mentioned earlier. It's just a bunch of moving around until you find them. You click one enough times for him to give you the entire combination to the gate, then you put it in and escape the mansion. You get some screensavers for this as well. If you ask me, they should mail you all the donuts you found as a reward instead. I think I deserve it after all that effort. Like the first one, I really enjoy this game. It's a little spookier, and some of the mini-games are harder than they were the first time around, but I still really like it. Both of these are great little adventures anyone can enjoy. They're also fun to go back and replay. You can see why so many of us had the times of our lives with these. Now if you'll excuse me, I think I'm gonna go find some sour cream donuts. I'm actually kinda interested in trying them now. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.